everybody. This podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsRevealease.com. CardsRevealease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snape Prime. I'm Zach Bro, And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week, we actually have quite a few topics for once. It's great. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, we will... I guess uh, we'll start off with something that we talked about in the last cast uh, that we didn't really expand upon, that we meant to, forgot, sorry. Uh, the two decks, uh, the two uh, dual decks, whatever, what are they called? Is it like, is there a name for them or is, are they just individually named? There's not like a series name. I don't know. Is this the, is this the Knights Wraith? versus the Wraith? Yeah. Knights versus Wraith, but are they like dual deck, intro deck? Like, is there like a an overarching name for them? I think I think these are dual decks. But then again, I don't know if that's D U A L or D U E L. Right, I'm thinking dual, like yo, let's do it, like Yu Gi Oh type stuff. But anyway, uh, do, have you both gotten your hands on copies of them? Yeah, I have. I have mine in a pile right in front of me, oh, both okay. of them together. <laughs> well, all right. So Cody and I will speak from theory, and Sam can speak from experience. Uh, how do we feel about only a single copy of each of the cards being full art and needing to buy three as a collector or if you want to have the full art play sets instead of foils or something do you have an opinion on that cody or are you just kind of lukewarm on it i mean it's probably a smart move for square you get to make more money so sure you know um, but how do you feel about it i mean they're not foil so they're, are they really worth that much <laughs> right right no i'll probably just buy one and just have one of each of the full arts and then if somebody wants to trade me the rest then so be it. sam what about you uh, I think it's a really good move uh, for all parties because, like, one, they at least come with, like, three copies of the Legends for the most part. I think we talked about this, me and you, but I don't remember if we confirmed it. But I think they come with, like, three copies of the Legends. So mm -hmm. new players get them. Um, collectors like ourselves have options to play with the the full art. Um, and as, as, for, as far as collectors go, like, if we want three full arts, we have to buy three. That's fantastic. Um, and then what happens is, is we have these extra two copies of, of Cecil or we have two extra copies of Lightning or whatever. And then, so those are going to go back into the market um, probably almost at no cost. Like, I will probably just <laughs> give mine away. Um, so that means that, like, newer players have uh, more options and have a, a greater chance to get those. So I think it's just win-win for everyone. Like, this is a really smart move. Um and should continue like this this trend should continue you know i i think i just finished back then i just finished my foil genesis and and all that and they released that right for vv and genesis. genesis and shadow yeah. lord that that one yeah I'm and, I, and i was never sad about those coming out like that's just this is just a net positive for the community i think that's fair and yeah yeah it's uh i mean cards are still gonna be worth a little bit because they're played all over the place but yeah at least new players will have access and there's and they're actually like good playable cards like phoenix and diablos are played in a lot of like meta decks but here's the uh other uh question for you then cody sam and i discussed this in the past uh mm -hmm. in the past being a previous recording uh, um do you well you are i guess you already answered uh, i was gonna say but do you prioritize foil or full art like, what's your hierarchy of what you'll put into a deck? Oh, foil, uh, foils. for sure. <laughs> so always foil, and then, like, yeah. if you don't have a foil, you probably just don't play it, right? That's right. Okay, so so I guess you don't even get to the next level of you yeah, know, playing no. a non-foil full art. Okay, all right. If you well, don't have foil easy. cards, you can't come <laughs> to the event. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jeez. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't, I, no, I don't know if there's any, like, I'm trying to think of, like, playable full art foil ice cards. Or full art ice cards. There wasn't even an ice card in this new deck. Stuff, you so. said playable. I know. Yeah, I said that, that was a joke. Uh, uh, well, oh, uh, fuck it. Hurdy. Is that a full art? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. The one that reveals top card draws in the new uh, deck that is we're going to talk about. Is a that bit. playable in mono ice? Not in mono ice. So it's not playable for Cody, but yeah. he said just playable. He did not say for his own decks or in mono ice. So, yeah, I imagine yeah. if like if like Mono Ice had like a Dell or a Lua, then that card would be playable. Yeah, some some kind of yeah. You like know, the sum the, the sum is nice, just aren't that good. So you know the, like, the three CP six K pseudo haste pseudo can't be targeted by things full arts that we're getting. Following that trend. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Sorry, I'm just salty that Alba is another promo after we just got Illua. Like, see. Anyway. So should this one be next? Hey, at least it's a wind card. Like, it does something different. 
I'm saying that Alba and Ilua are so similar because they both have face, they're both 6k, 3 CP, lightning forward, they have some sort of evasion. Obviously, Ilua's got more, you know, blanket usability, but... Yeah, that's an understatement. Know. Shoal just wins entire <laughs> matches. <laughs> oh, I understand. I'm just saying that you're given another version of that kind of card there's, there's a whole deck archetype that uh just tries to shoal 20 times in one match <laughs> so yeah. i hear that deck's pretty good in fact <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that but uh well actually i guess we can just yeah we'll talk about arizona first and move on to another topic related to arizona i sort of uh so yeah uh how was the event sam um uh, minus the health setbacks arizona was fantastic i had a great time um I really enjoy taking the time off to judge. Um, not, I mean, for, for the obvious reasons of just being able to visit the community and stuff, but then there's the reasons that, like, I don't have to stress over playing a deck and figuring out a deck. And I actually stress a lot over that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's fantastic. As you should, right? Like, that's kind of like the healthy, sometimes unhealthy, hopefully healthy stress that nah. comes along with playing a TCG competitively. <laughs> no, nah, I wish I was like Zayim and could just, like, you know, copy some Josh Goh's original water deck and then, <laughs> you know, not, not stress about building my own stuff and then, or be like Josh Goh and copy Toby's original whatever deck and then, you know, not stress about building my own stuff. That'd be fantastic. Um, but no, I stress over that stuff. And so not having to stress over that is pretty good. And then also, like, I get to sit with the best players of the day all day, every day, pay close attention to their matches. And thus, I'm learning all the time. So I think right. the event was fantastic. I thought it was run fantastic. Um, from start to finish, we had no mess ups. Um, no repairs, no resets, no, hey. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Nothing went wrong basically anywhere. With the event. With the event. Yeah. There were not even any complaints over the course of the event. I mean, which is surprising because this community has become one that likes to complain a lot about everything. So <laughs> seeing as how we made it almost all the way through the weekend without any type of drama, <laughs> I think it just sets the bar for, for nationals. Like, I think we can do it. I think, I believe. I believe. So before we move on to that kind of stuff, uh, deck-wise, uh, con well, congratulations to Emmanuel for qualifying for Worlds. Uh, congratulations the to the, the three-time. Yeah, and Okimoto for crushing it. But why, why, I mean, you only get two. No congratulations on this cast. Uh, yeah, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, let, let's not shoot past this. Okay, okay. So there are there are two camps. I want to let's talk about that for real quick. I know it wasn't on the schedule. Was there? There are two camps, right? There are those people that are like obsessive, like oh my gosh, it's just insane, right? Like yes, he's good, but he's human, all right. And I've seen him make mistakes. You've seen him make mistakes. Like he, he's he's a human being. He's really good. But there's also the other camp. That is sort of like, yeah, okay, he won two, great, let's just move on. Like, no, like, what he's done this season I'm is joking. really cool. I know, but I want to point it out because I don't think people, like, people did not give him enough credit for also Gen Con, the Gen Con win, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it was just glossed over because, well, it got passed down to Kyle Peters, great. You know, just like this, it's like, well, the first thing, and I, and I get that you're joking, but the first thing you do is congratulate Emmanuel, but it's like, holy crap, like, congratulations, Okimoto won another Crystal Cup. Like, this is awesome. This is really cool. It should be the bar that is set for people to just keep coming back and winning events. Mm -hmm. But also, like, the people that are worshiping him, like, just get better, okay? Like, <laughs> that that's my solution. I think Okimo is an awesome person, so I think that people should strive to be as good as he is. But he is the man, not the god. So, you know, let's 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 see Cody Snodgrass take him down at Nationals. That's, that's, that's what we're going for. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're on the same team. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you? No. Not technically, you know. Yeah. I mean, is I'm looking like at this top eight. I'm seeing some familiar names. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sam Tool topping with a... I was going to say, Sam Tool topping with a sick uh, water lightning deck. Uh, go, Kyle Peters, uh, along with <clears throat> playing one of the really sweet, uh, what we're calling the deck. So, spoiler for everybody, uh, the past casts where we've discussed, like, well, where we've avoided discussing a deck... Uh, it was this kind of crazy Moogles multicolor nonsense that uh, did very well this event. Uh, I mean, it won, well, Okimoto won with that deck. Uh, Kyle Peters was playing a version of it in the top eight. Kyle McGinty was playing a version of it in the top eight. The deck just did well all weekend. And uh, I thought my team was going to play it too. Mm -hmm. Like, we discovered it as well, like just a different version of it. Yeah, we were playing it locals, play it. and it was, yeah, it's a blast. They ended up not playing it for some reason. To, to their disadvantage, in my opinion. Yeah. 
but uh, that's the deck with you know the place hurdy see and uh the first version came from japan uh i don't recall exactly who played it i know kurosawa I did some work on it but it i don't know like if he was original or fourth. yeah uh so we tried it at locals of course like we all we play all the crazy five color multi or five color decks that come out of japan and it was shockingly powerful uh but it wasn't all crazy moogles back then it was playing like sage and some other just things that aren't like that are four and six that don't actually cost four and six like a pearl rube and philia all that but uh because i think they're just kind of scared of lowering fusoya's value by putting in two cp things like moogles uh but as we saw with this tournament it doesn't matter deck's still good now cody uh it's kind of just a running joke but actually the truth you don't like playing super complex color wise complex decks uh we're not gonna call you know mono ice a simple deck but uh you like to stick to your guns uh how do you what do you think about this deck uh now that you've seen it kind of more in the public eye uh i think it's fine um <laughs> i don't know i've seen it <laughs> i've seen it at locals uh i've won against it i've lost against it i think it's a good deck um i think i don't know a lot cody's of... considering a deck i think it's fine <laughs> no uh no i'm well, he can't play know. it alongside Mono Ice it, it because away, it's Sephiroth. It takes away three copies of Sephiroth, yeah. yeah. yeah fun um, story, fun story. Cody refused to play Sephiroth before, and I just kept telling him how good it was. Oh, for a long time I refused it. Oh, yeah. But it's yeah. a good card, apparently. <laughs> Especially yeah, when you um, give it haste. <laughs> Repeatedly. Yeah, I, I, I think the deck has a lot of room. Like, There's a lot of wiggle room. I don't think anybody's figured out like the best list for it. Um, for sure. Yeah. And I don't even know if we're going to be able to see the best list of it because I think people are moving on to things that beat it now, preparing for nationals. Um, so it's an Although interesting Matt one for nationals because you can't share. Like, it's one thing to not be able to play like, like if you could do like two copies of a card and one copy in another deck, but like this one just takes a ton of cards from a ton of different decks. Yeah. So, so you you get this deck in mono, and mono fire water. or this deck in mono water. Like yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or like Firewater Nine, if like that ends up finding a nice version of it or something. Yeah, I, I enjoyed sure. it when I played it. I love Phoenix no, and Vivi. It's a cool deck for sure. <laughs> the, uh, didn't Firewater come in? Didn't Firewater come in second? I believe. No, not the nine version, but not yeah. the nine version. No, uh, it okay. was just kind of a really aggressive Zidane list with Belias and things like that. Uh, pl uh, played five copies of Rain, so it's trying to maximize on those specials. It looks like with Nail, of course. It's a pretty sweet list. So yeah, if you're looking cool. for. If you're looking for two Nationals decks, you could just play first and second, right? Yeah, there you go. You could just play the first place and the second place decks alongside each other. There's an argument for that. That's, that's probably not too far out there. Um, and then you're playing all I, but light. Oh, no, actually, no. You'd what, be playing how, how many, all eight elements. Off the top of my list, I can't think of the cards that overlap between... Oh, Sam Tool's deck definitely had three Alula. That's important. Never mind. All right, I was yeah. trying to think if you could play Sam Tool's deck because that deck is pretty freaking good. Uh, he's also playing three Seven Drop for Soya. Oh yeah, yeah, that's important yeah. too. Which I didn't yeah, realize. Right, so that's kind of crazy. No. But that might be, that deck might be the play too. Like that deck's really good. Uh, like a version of it, yeah. Well, it doesn't take away your Sephiroths, is my point. Right. Uh, yeah, it looks. And the only other like, oh, it takes away Gramus or Gramus though, because the other deck plays one copy. Yeah, only because that that rule, yeah, where you can't. Yeah, play. it searches Gabranth, and it's pretty important. It's probably a pretty good rule, though. Honestly, like otherwise, I would just show up with probably two different colors of wind water this one this one this one plays one porum this one plays two right this one has so it's like one porum two lena and one, one lena two porum yeah they, they each have like one fasoya or something like whatever just two copies of the same deck just one one has two one has one right or just be me and just play high, two highlanders no <laughs> well highlander and then a save that for highlander. save that for the third for the three the three uh the three, the three deck, deck format challenge. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway so that was a sweet event i like the results uh i will give a shout out i didn't actually look at this list until today even though i've looked at the top eight before uh garbage time by brian lou this uh nonsensical like magic <laughs> sam doesn't like it magic no. pot scale toad <laughs> i love it because i tried this exact kind of strategy just without like selkie did it uh, work for you it made cp and played cards by all means. In the order that I wanted it to. It just didn't win the games. I that's where to. you get lucky. <laughs> that's, that's where well, you got to get lucky. To be fair there's, a fair, there's a fair number of differences here. Uh, 
but I, I yeah, was I also mean, trying Basilisk. I don't hate it. I don't time. hate it from like the fact like it clearly did well. I hate it from like a design perspective. There are just better <laughs> monster decks. Yeah. There are better Skeleto decks. There are better et cetera decks. So like it's cool. Brian did well with this deck, but like I don't love the deck personally. Right, right. Uh, it was so, fun. To watch, it was fun to watch him play, though. That was that's for sure. Oh, I bet. Yeah, no. It's always fun watching someone else play that because you get to like live vicariously through them and like their successes. You just like get to feed off of. <laughs> but, so, not, by the way, this is a fun fact that you guys you don't really know. Uh, but I predicted every winner of every single stream on camera for the entire event. Not only that, for most of them. Now, this part I couldn't prove. The other part I could prove because I I. I I was discussing with some friends who I thought might win, but this part I can't prove. I predicted most of the winners just by sitting on the side with an opening hand by looking at whether they kept or mulliganed. I could almost exclusively determine who was going to win the game. Isn't that interesting? So it, it could did just you... be totally correlation versus causation, but like every so... time I was like, I would keep this hand almost every time. And they mulliganed, they lost the game. Actually, every time, every time, they opened the hand. I was like, oh, that's a good keep. And they would mulligan. They would lose the game. And then every time they opened and I was like, oh, like that needs to be mulligan. And they kept, they lost the game. <laughs> every single time, 100% of the time. And I was just like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder how many games Every single time, 100% of the time. That's yes, how the phrase I, goes, right? I, I, no, but... <laughs> no, I know. I, I <laughs> think that it's interesting. I wonder how many people lose games based off the mulligan decisions. And how I mean, mulliganing is super important. Them. Like, a good yeah. measure to see if somebody's kind of, like, versed in the game is to see how often they're willing to mulligan. Because, like, you'll see a lot of new players, like, really get attached to the known information and not be willing to chuck it back for something that you know or that you that may be better or more beneficial uh and that especially comes into play if like you're in a big tournament and you know you've you've been around you see your opponents what they're on then it adds just a whole nother element to the mulligan game but like well, a lot also, of newer players also, will be like ah, i'm just gonna keep this because it has two backups it's like what are also, those? these are their decks though and they, they have more experience with for them. sure so yeah. like there's a good chance that like i'm just biased and i got lucky <laughs> with my thought process and that they it's, have a, more it's a fun fact right so it is. I thought it was a fun fact for sure. Yeah. There are a I'll lot of fun facts did. about that event. <laughs> fun fact, I was in the hospital all night with anaphylactic shock and barely made it back to the event the next day. Probably shouldn't have. The hospital didn't want to release me. Um, fun fact. But you said later. <laughs> I uh, said that I had made a commitment to be there to do something and I was going to finish my commitment. So. Right. So let's talk about after the event then. Yay. Uh, so I didn't see the original post. Uh, you didn't see the original back. posts with a plural. Posts, yeah. I saw later down the line, I think I saw some of it, but I, I, I'm not fully versed on this topic other than what I've seen, kind of the aftermath, which is the break zone stepping down from doing commentary for, well, the future. Uh, so Sam, correct. Uh, do you have any kind of details that you know on this, or like, can you guys kind of fill me in on something I might have missed? So I won't fill on anything behind behind the scenes, just for privacy reasons. But I'll tell you that I was extremely disappointed in the community. I made that very well known. It's not a, it's not a secret. It's not calling anybody out. I was extremely disappointed in the community, um, the way that they behaved, the way that they treated the break zone. Um, I think that a good fun fact um, is that the break zone who refused to take me to get my favorite alcoholic drink because they knew I needed to go to the hospital. And trust me, I was all about getting the drink. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was so frustrated. Like most Priorities. People, I was very frustrated. All right. But here's the other thing. I wasn't thinking clearly, right? My brain was literally starving of oxygen. I got to the I got to the um, the hospital and my blood oxygen level was like so low. They immediately admitted me and moved me back to the crisis unit, like immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay, they they literally immediately like epipen me everything. So I wasn't thinking clearly. The break zone, Johnny and Lawrence refused to go anywhere else but the hospital. Okay, despite the fact that we were all starving. Okay, and then they would not leave the hospital until I was out. They stayed the whole time. Okay. Now that might not mean anything to anyone that might say, Oh, well that has nothing to do with their commentary. No, but it says what stand up people they were 
and how much that they gave to the community. Myself as a member of the community, a very vocal and active one, they stayed with me in the hospital until I was released, period. No if, ands, or buts. That says a lot to me about their character. Um, and so the bottom line is, is, is maybe you don't agree with their commentary. I think that's totally fine. Their commentary needed work in some aspects, as does my judging, as does Cody's play. Everyone can improve from things that they, they, they're, they're good at or bad at. It doesn't matter. The fact that we treated them as a community so poorly, I think, is just a huge injustice to what they deserved. That's the bottom line. Yeah, uh, I've been critical in the past. Anyone who's listened to the podcast for a long enough time has heard me drop criticisms here and there of the quality of commentary and just kind of as competitive players, we like to hear more of kind of competitive thoughts of others to kind of it's almost like we're bouncing ideas off somebody, even though we're not having a direct conversation. So like maybe we're looking for that kind of more experiential, high level analysis. But at the same time, like that's not everything, right? Like, yeah, they are great people, of course. Like, I love hanging out with them at events. We, we had uh, dinner, like, what, twice with them when we were at Gen Con, at, at least, or something like that? Yeah, and at I would even say it's, it's almost barely anything. Like, I'm not saying that the, 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 the super high-level experience, world's level commentary is not important, but most of the high-level players are at this event playing, not not watching. I'm not Fair. saying that doesn't say that because you want, you want people that are interested in the game and growing into the game to get involved, okay? But... The, the people that are vocal are, are the people that are the people that are, are saying like I watch it with mute I watch it on mute I watch it on mute yo how can you say every time I always watch it with mute but then complain about oh they made this joke again <laughs> are you watching it on mute or are you not watching it on mute like it's one or the other like you're either watching it on mute or you're not and if you're if you want to play the the bombing mission FF7 music while you watch it fantastic that's great but I will tell you that the new players I've talked to love the break zone. All right. And so it's it's not as one side as you think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I heard jokes like if they say, oh, if they say the Google Moogle or one of these things like one more time, like, OK, like, is that really what's bothering you? Like, is that is that the epitome of what, what, what we think makes good commentary? Did like you say they, epitome? Listen, if they <laughs> if they really think that this is the most important part of commentary, then they're missing the point, I think. I think that they could have done better with some card knowledge um, and or certain things happening. Sorry about my dog going crazy. It's epitome. That's why I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're correct. I listen, to be fair, I'm also, it's 93 degrees oh, no, I, at this I, point I, in I'm, my house. I have no I AC. Know. I am hot as I, yeah, we need to get the AC fixed. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that like, yes, I agree that they had stuff to work on, but those are fantastic guys, um, you know, and, and, and to be treated like and they, A lot they of it could be solved with another member, right? Like have rotating members or something like on the team or some kind of other process than just like berating and whatever. Well, like, I'm sure it's not as simple as that, though, right? Because it's not like, as simple. But... Another hotel or another bed or another flight, um, another oh, per hour, yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. But I, I, saying, I, like, I as, as a criticism, like you can just say, hey, instead of like shitting on them, like just say, hey, well, we could, you know, help whatever, yes. foster another member, or do something like, yes, like, find a solution rather than just a problem and leaving it. I don't know. The, uh, the other problem is that all these people talking have no actual idea what they're talking about they'll say things like um well the i'm trying to say things that are um, very I'm, I'm, I'm being careful with my words let me just say this there are things that were that were spread and said like oh well square enix refused that and square enix refused that and all and all this type of stuff but you don't actually know that you just heard from someone it, it, it could be just the farthest thing from the truth and you're just spreading false information and you're just creating more drama and honestly shame on you like like stop trying to pretend to be part of the greatest what i think at least used to be the greatest community but then like you're part of the problem like i don't know you're just not welcome in my opinion any uh input cody uh i think i'm i'm pretty boned about the the break zone stepping down uh, i messaged jt and talked to him a little bit about it um I think people are going to miss them a lot. Uh, 
I think nationals. I don't know who's gonna who's gonna take over for commentary because the people who everybody Big who shoes to fill. I would say like the people who are dogging on the break zone um, think that a certain group was gonna take over that, and that's not the case. And I won't I won't say any particular names or anything like that, but well, that, and and good for good reason, right? I mean, yeah, there, and there, um, you know. Like, Things were not handled professionally. No, no. And, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Breaks on guys. I watch all their streams whenever I can. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we've had our criticisms on the podcast that we've talked about, but, I mean, For people sure. have criticized. Right, had- but we, ours comes from a place of, like, hey, here's what we're, like, here's a criticism we have, and here's some advice on what we could do, to, you could do to fix it, or, like, at least in our image. But it doesn't necessarily, we're not, like, saying you must do this, or, like, we're, I mean, some crazy threat or like yeah. i don't know there's a lot of like stupid stuff that's thrown around um, i mean i can't i can't recall every like criticism we've ever said about them not that I mean, most of it had to do with like the competitive level right like that's 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 it but like, you can't me, really dog on them a whole the, lot for the, like production quality and like the pauses between yeah. games have been improved at least like i know when i tuned into the stream i was at disney for most of it uh that weekend but like i was on mobile every when i was like waiting in line or something i would try to watch and like they were playing a game of like uh uh gunslinger Friday match yeah, yeah. And i was like yeah. sweet like this is what we want we just want content in between just whatever can fill the time yeah. there's no doubt that if you take the break zone from the beginning the break zone that you ended up with like huge improvements those those mm-hmm. guys put their hearts and souls into it huge improvements and just imagine where they would have been next year and i totally get that maybe you want these this mtg level cast but the the, the fun fact is that that's just not gonna happen and it's not gonna happen now it's not gonna happen in the future like the money just isn't there yet because it's not Wizards of the Coast. That's just the fact. All right. Go watch some other streams. I've watched a ton of other streams from other card games after this whole event. And holy crap, are those terrible. There's so many bad streams out there for card games. I mean, Zach, did you not get like ripped apart over like asking about a stream for a different game? I wouldn't even call <laughs> I wouldn't even I wouldn't even call out that community, okay? But like you get ripped apart for asking for stream, like who do you think we are? MTG? Like, well, yeah, because they're like, oh, well, anyone who's good enough to commentate or playing in the event and asking them to commentate is like really selfish. I'm like, I was just asking if there was going to be commentary along with a stream. Like, calm and, down, right? Like, like calm. even RB messaged me and was like, wow, they really jumped on you for asking a pretty normal question. <laughs> right. But see, that's what I'm saying, though, right? So, first off, you want world level commentators, but you want them playing in the event. I mean, pick one, right? Pick yeah. one. Someone's going to have to sacrifice. And it doesn't have to be um, world's level, right? Like, it doesn't actually no. have to be that extreme, no. whatever. Like, I will say the break zone were fantastic lads. They will be missed. And their professionalism in handling this. Look, they said the community doesn't want us here anymore. Okay, we're going to step down. Very professional way to handle it. They didn't cause drama. They didn't dog. Tr- they did- here- Here's what they didn't do. They didn't talk crap about other producers. That's what's important, I think. They they said, you know what? Like they want they w- they want something else. Give them something else. You know, they're very professional about the way they handled this. Any other thoughts on this topic? Or oh, I have. You know, I could go on. Well, I'm like, there's listen. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this for like an hour last week, and we weren't able to release it um, because I I about blew a fuse okay so um it was gonna require a lot of cutting and pacing and cody wasn't here we're like let's just do a redo <laughs> yes um the the, the fact mostly is because is cody wasn't I, here most yeah that we'll say that it's mostly kind of, cody. kind of a big deal <laughs> thank goodness he's here this week we got to have our world's qualified member of the cast on here otherwise we're not you know qualified to put out the content so Oof. exactly <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so <laughs> Wow, there's so much pun in that level. Like it's I, that actually was completely unintentional. <laughs> no, there's there's multiple levels of pun there. Fantastic yeah. job. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have a new problem. Who's gonna commentate Nats? Right. We don't know. We don't know. So comment we'll on the video. Yes. Who you think I, <laughs> who you would nominate <laughs> to be tribute. <laughs> Here, yeah, here's the thing. Like, yeah, there's a there's a lot of things. Never mind. Here's it. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Um <laughs> We already know who people want to nominate, and and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I, you know, people are going to complain no matter what. Period. People complain you, about you got to pick which complaint you want to deal with. Right. Like, like I think we talked about this last week, and I went on a huge rant about this. But people complain about our podcast, 
And the fact is, is like, hey, like, first off, no shame on anyone who's got their, um, not their, I, I forget, not the GoFundMe stuff, but the other uh, Patreon. Patreon. No, no complaints about those guys. More power to you. Rake it in. You guys are putting money into the cast. We, I, I couldn't tell you to do it for free. So I have no quarrel with that. But we're just three guys that get together and talk once a week about the thing that we like. Um, and and you know, if you don't like our podcast, cool. Go listen to another one. There are so many awesome podcasts. I mean, like, like, like I said, like, if you want to go listen to to the detectives over at Chris Adams and John Schreiner, like, I could not be more happy. Like, they are, have fantastic content. Go listen to them. It is amusing. <laughs> it's 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 insightful. It's it's just it's a great listen. Um, there are other casts that are more formal um, and have some great things to talk about too. So, hey, if if you don't like our podcast. Um, thanks for the name. There's something out there for you. Yeah, no. Zach, Zach's yeah. Shout out, shout out to the, the two yeah. Downs. Shout out to the two of you who are super consistent in the first, say, half hour to an hour. The cast is out. That I know you couldn't have finished the video before doing it. The two thumbs down every time. I hope you got this far into the video, so you know we truly appreciate the negative attention you brought to us. <laughs> because, like, for real, we know. like criticism, but like, that's just. Unless, like, okay, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> again, 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 newsflash, we don't do it for you, okay? We don't do it for you. But we know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I know you for are. Now. We for now. For now. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, to the, toxic, the toxic people in the community, if you don't notice, seem to kind of get pushed out. So, I got time. I'll wait you out. <laughs> anyway uh so we have two other events that uh did you guys even know they happened this weekend i saw like a single post and it like i was like oh cool this is happening and like why didn't i hear about this or a stream i don't know uh italian nationals and french nationals no but there's uh, a lot of people at each one so that was really cool yeah it's uh 70 at the 70 italian and, and 106 106, 106 yeah. at french yeah that's pretty good and it's the same weekend which means that there's like in your in europe it's a split population well i guess there are two different days though well there were so, no repeats between the players right so i think that it's a pretty good representation that okay, i know you can play accurate. him yeah, yeah you can play I mean, you whichever can play one multiple, I, I don't right? see any repeated top names in fact wasn't didn't jamie win spanish nationals la either this year or last year yeah right yeah which. so i know you can i know you can play in the in the other ones um so it's cool to see we had no repeat players. Um, the I mean, to be fair, like the size of the U.S. and like North America as a whole, and where our yeah, events yeah. are placed oh, sure, compared yeah. to the size of Europe, it's like their countries are almost like state distances for us, right? So like us traveling to Kansas City or Arizona is like going from England to like Portugal, Spain, like anywhere within. I mean, those are pretty close, but <laughs> like it's really not that big of a deal. Like people go country to country all the time so like it, it makes sense to me that that's how their system works that you can kind of play in whatever event otherwise like if your country only gets one event like that kind of sucks right like yeah i think you have to play with like like 75 percent of their cards or something like that like you have to play with their language cards i do believe um really yeah um or but, do you have to do like have a translation like a copy of that card in that language i'm not sure i'm pretty sure you Man, have can you imagine like, that then you have to have like you have to have four of every card, right? So German, English, Spanish, French, I imagine, would be the main four. I don't know what languages is printed in. But then, like, whatever event you play in, say you're in Germany, you play with a French, English, and Spanish copy of a card, and then you have the German for reference. <laughs> like, can you, that'd be insane. <laughs> I think that would be doing the most. Um, Wait. I think Cody became a robot. Yeah, I cut out there for a second. Okay, sorry. Repeat. No, I think that'd be doing a little bit too much. Uh, yeah, but but, but like, so like... but is that a thing though, Sam? Do you know about that? Uh, if in Europe, when you play an event, you have to have seventy five percent of your cards be in that native language to the country. Yeah, I knew about that. In That's... fact, it started it started a lot of bad like rumors here where people would be like, "You can't." And we don't have right, any, right. we don't have that type of rule. So mm -hmm. I think we've talked about that before. But we we don't have that type of rule. Please show up with a hundred percent Japanese deck. I think that's awesome. That, I was just saying to Cody, like, imagine if, like, playing in Europe, you'd have to have, like, four copies of every card. It'd be, like, one in each language, so that whatever event, you play with the other three, and then you can translate with the fourth copy, <laughs> like, if someone needs it. But, 
that would be no. even <laughs> worse than trying to get a foil place out of everything here <laughs> uh try, oh man four full arts anyway uh so then the uh results wise uh the italian national uh was won by luca riboldi i'm just gonna pretend i know how to pronounce these names um that one's not that one's not too bad but uh lots of wind and ice with like water as a support color oh i guess there's a on a water all right i guess the main three never mind nothing yeah nothing to report <laughs> yeah. uh, well the npcs came up too did you watch the? did you look at the npc uh list uh, I was getting to that after we talked about the European tournaments, but oh, I mean, I just thought we'd talk about the more exciting stuff right away. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> listen, just... Richie, Richie Brady, come on, mono right, fire. We're, we're getting. Oh, seriously, I haven't seen that yet. Uh, and then shout out French national though, Julian Pick or Paquin, Paquin. I'm assuming Paquin. Uh, Colbo Droid Power winning it with three copies of Colbo Droid in their deck with lots of uh, Lar Lar I'm never gonna know that name. Uh, Yurian J, Galdas, <laughs> all the ways to get the monsters back. Uh, that deck's sweet. It's definitely something up uh, both, I think, mine and Sam's alley. Uh, Cody, not so much. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the event looks pretty tame. It looks like a couple uh, mono wins with someone, I guess, playing Maria to try to break the uh, parody in the mirror. Uh, Evan, oh, wait. Evan Tan guy added another element to his lightning deck. He's playing a very similar list to what Sam Tool played. Uh, seems pretty similar anyway. Cool to see in it. Expanding. You're right. It'd be like Andy Carmona putting uh, blue cards in his purple deck. <laughs> but uh, okay, so we'll go to Meta Potion then. We'll, we'll just jump right over there. Uh, oh, okay. So RB was on an Ifrit. Oh, that's pretty sweet. So nine copies of Ifrita and her pals Ifrit from various games yeah Brit really See, and I, be I believe that I think in the description it says that the Terra is actually the new fire Terra that would make sense yeah yeah that's so a, that's whenever you cast a summon uh, trigger deal two, right I don't know I don't read red cards so you know <laughs> yes that's what it does and um, you can get back and you can get back uh, summon managers yeah alright so you just get back Ifrits all day and then, or Ifrit whatever you want to say and yep. they just like nuke things. So two, so all these are two plus whatever their printed damages. So Ifrita deals yep. nine on target. Vermilion Bird deals ten on target. That seems pretty good. Seems pretty sweet. Yeah, and then um, so the Moogles deck did pretty well at this event. It looked like <laughs> yeah, it did okay, I guess. Three copies, yeah. First, second, and eighth. It looks like yeah. So you wonder good. if the, you wonder if the eighth if, if Kelly lost to one of the other ones too, which would make it really interesting. <laughs> or if the uh, mono fire whooped it is what you're trying to get at. Yeah, and like ice fire, ice ice fire like also seems pretty good against it possibly. So I don't know, could be. Um, yeah, I mean, I know, I I know that Richie didn't beat it because i talked to her and she had mentioned losing to it beating it in swiss but then losing to it in top so she would have also mentioned beating it in top if she had done so so i think that it was taken out by one of these other players i like chris neal uh this list with the new new uh terra alongside like phoenix and glossia like does it ha it doesn't have to be a fire summon sure. right because it's any summon because no, you could do like moomba to kill things uh, yeah, yeah it, it, so it, that seems pretty sweet dealing 10k with phoenix or 9k with uh glossia seems real good yeah i i would not be surprised by the way just to see chris neal like if we were just doing wild predictions like i would put him very highly for top four nats like this guy's on a tear oh for sure he he's yeah. already world's qualified right though correct yeah i think yeah, that so. he won Port portland yep yep cody knows his team <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we just do and cross stories. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. yeah, no, this is pretty sweet. Oh wait, what's this? Uh, whoa! So this uh, water fire deck. Did you actually click on it? Um, always. Uh, so Gal <laughs> Galdes, New Terra, and well, I'm assuming New Terra, and Cla wow. With bombs, lava spider, goblins, like, like more bombs, more bombs. 
random encounter. encounter. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> just all the bombs lined up. You gotta put like yeah. one flan in there just for, or like a Ariman. I like Malboro with lava spider. That's cute. That yeah, is, like uh, how, you, how, how are you how are you blocking that profitably? <laughs> so wait, it gets plus three, right? So it's just like a five power swing. Like, yeah, right. it's like pretty nuts. Like you can't block with you can't block a Malboro like ever, right? Not, like imagine not your, your opponent's, about it. Your opponent's on six damage, you party attack with two Marlboros, like what are you gonna do? Uh yeah, lose to I, bomb, that's what you're gonna do. But like you know what's kinda cool is like these decks pop not not just this deck, but like Sam Tools deck, this deck, the the water fire aggro deck, the Moogles deck, like all these different decks popping up. Um, it's probably brought to you by Dataluma saying Sainara, honestly. Like, could you imagine playing Water Fire against Dataluma deck still? Like, <laughs> sounds miserable. <laughs> right? Like, nice Terra and bombs. <laughs> Be a shame if well, she like, went away. Yeah, like, nice Fasoya. Like, kill that and kill that. You know, like, ping, ping. Like, I don't know. Like, this is really cool that, um, I, like, again, it's so unfortunate because like that makes people eat their words like about Dataluma not needing a ban but we did predict that it would increase diversity because he pushed out a lot of and we don't know for strategy. sure we don't know for sure that that's the reason that's increasing it because there's been new cards and there's a whole new set but the evidence fits the know. conclusion therefore that is why <laughs> yeah <laughs> no well Begging the question here. Daluma oh, is the reason. Begging the question. <laughs> actually, actually, that might have been the correct use of begging the question. It was. That's why. I was like, that's wait a second. No, it, it is. Okay. <laughs> I hate. Oh, anyway, that's a that's a different podcast. Uh, um, yeah. No. These. Uh. Yeah. No. This. This pretty sweet top mm. eight actually. Like. Yeah. Sure. There's three copies, but like that deck's just sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna be biased towards it all the time. Uh. Gregory yeah. Cole doing Gregory Cole things. Uh. Then yeah. No, that's pretty sweet. The modifier is awesome too. Nice to see it. Uh, top four, I guess. Yeah, it had to have lost to the Moogles deck, right? Because the top two were. Oh, that's pretty funny. I just realized Mono Water Fusoya is anything but. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I imagine that this is, <laughs> this is Dan's Dan's secret hell, uh, secret hint that it'll be this deck plus Mono Water Fusoya at nationals. Oh, so. I mean that that's pretty on the <laughs> nose, though, right? Like that's. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's gonna be kind of the default option like if you can i guess people have enough time now to like a take the deck seriously because yeah. when you first pick it up your first time like even if you're a great player you're gonna miss a couple things and like different lines and interactions that happen sure uh especially like knowing when to pop your herd to get back shoals and stuff uh which can be done at any time uh those little things you have to play the deck to really learn those like i just switched versions like i played the original japanese version for a while really enjoyed it did well with it then i switched to i tried okimoto's version and like i actually got tripped up on a few things where i was like oh i should have done this i didn't realize this i didn't recognize this thing was the wrong you know synergy for this card and i today fumbled. i learned luminous puma is a category 13 you know, oh that was great like that. <laughs> except when i realized i had except when i went uh sacrifice luminous puma to get my lightning back and then played her like oh. whoops <laughs> so, that, those little things oh, whoopsies for sure uh yeah. but but yeah so the deck's awesome but people have enough time to work on it and make it their own like there's like cody said there's a lot of ways there's a lot of different versions there may not even be a correct or strongest version it's just can you identify what the meta game dependent sure yeah meta game dependent version is yeah because it could shift like event to event based on what people think so got to be that 500 IQ playing the deck and uh, building the deck also. For sure. Uh, so one other little uh, tidbit here uh, we'll wrap up on is we saw the announcement for Opus 10 and some of the goodies coming along with it. How do we feel about counters? And we actually got a little more details about them. I think it was either today or yesterday. Uh, about uh, one of the distributors I don't think it's a leak because they had the information and they're a distributor so I imagine unless they open packs or something but yeah I, I yeah uh, where it hasn't been taken down on Facebook so I'm hoping this is fine <laughs> but uh, where fun. yeah you put counters on it'll give them effects it'll give them bonuses based on like other things on the field they said they're like shuriken tokens or something like that or counters 
Uh, how do you guys feel about that? I think it's cool. I've never played um, with anything like that, so it's kind of new to me. Uh, I know I've seen like some magic cards um, that have like I think they're called level up or something like that. Yeah, level, level up kind of things. Level would be, sick. would be cool. Like some sort of way anthems would be cool. I think Zach and I talked a lot about this, but we came up with like about like forty to fifty different iterations <laughs> of what they could do with this. Yeah, like every it time you cast a summon, put design. a level counter, and then like they can cast different yeah. like fire, 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 aga kind of thing. Like as uh, like right, a so like, card. especially with people like Terra, Tella, Fasoya, like these are the characters that you want to see. Like um, you know, like like if if Tella you know didn't start with all these things and he remember you know um at the, you know when he gets a certain counter he gets to cast like this you know like mm -hmm. it's pretty cool um or you know count be able to like get back the number of summons equal to the number of counters on this card you like know? for each counter or each like a uh, static effect or a field a field ability on a card that says like cards with this type of counter have plus 1k and brave and like so this card enters and puts one on or something then it dies yeah another yeah. one enters you put on another guy and i have two plus 1k braves going in just because like a, a field a good a good a good a good call too would be like something like a kefka that like whenever you um whenever a monster enters the field and your thing put a counter on it and when you hit when it has 10 counters on it destroy all other characters destroy you know, all like, non-monster cards or something like that yeah you know because like kefka blows up the world like it, it, they could do cool story related things the thing mm -hmm. we talked about before that i talked about is like the palem versus porum where like palem and porum they literally turn themselves to stone right and so like do something put a counter on this for palem and do something put a counter on this for porum if you ha control both of counters on them you can't lose the game you know like they literally sacrifice themselves you know, so there, there's a lot of cool design space, both both in story and in game. I think that's the most important part is it opens up a whole brand new, like you said, design space, yeah, like yeah. a ton Listen, it, of stuff you can do with any. Miles, it, Grep, Miles G is on board. Yeah, we right. We know it's board. right. <laughs> so because not only <laughs> except first, we weren't sure uh last time we talked about this what that meant like is it a singular counter and like all the cards are going to interact with the same counter are there different types of counters and it sounds like there could be different types which means it could be infinite possibilities with this and i wonder yeah. if this is and i think this would be beneficial in my brain if it will kind of replace the design space that was taken up by items in chapters because items were just another card type so like now we have to decide between summons and monsters and items like how do we want to win with our forwards or like it, it would just I don't with 50 card decks it's really hard to kind of imagine playing a fifth card type I guess that's kind of what we thought with monsters at first but I mean four is yeah. not that bad. I think it's Five fine. I think you can do much. like another twenty card types and they'd be fine. It is harder for newer players, but I I, I agree. Um, I prefer not to see items, but mm -hmm. I say that now. Eventually, I think it'd be really cool. I was a little bit nervous when monsters were coming out, but I mean that I, fan for is just insane, right? People like, know you me suit for up this monsters, giant guy, I, and you're like fan for it. Like, gone. Yeah, it's yeah, certainly, yeah. The, it is really cool, but the, the story behind being able to equip like. Sephiroth with the Master Moon is like pretty sick, you know. Like that, right. that, that kind of adds like some really cool details to the game. Have a Gilgamesh that steals people's swords. Yeah, like stealing items would be pretty cool. Like having Zidane that steals items would be cool. Wait, they can yeah. reprint Hero Riku, and Mug can now say, "Take an item from an opponent from an opposing and put it on yours." <laughs> you know, I you bring it up. One of the cool things that could take place is like actions, almost like summons, but actions. So like. Like mug as a, as a literal yeah like an ability attack that happens yeah. yeah it'd be cool like if you what play this called, during like, tech, a, what were they instead called? of a summon it's like Technical whenever you play it whenever they're attacking or whatever I've thought about that before if they could add spells but it's basically the same thing as summons in this game so it'd be hard to implement it and like justify it but like where if you control a summoner you can use this or whatever and like then fire right. a fire a, but I think that'd be better with counters and like leveling up system. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool. The the point is there's a lot of cool um, stuff they could do with it. Um, the fact that they originally said, I think they said they didn't want outside materials being played in the game, and now they're introducing this says that they're willing to say, hey, we made a mistake. Possibly if it's better We're for the game. Yeah. Yes. Kind of like they talked about rotation, ban list, all that, where they said they wanted to avoid this and that. Now they're just like banning cards when it yeah and and i don't even think they said we'll never ban now you know like they're they're willing to revisit um things and I, imagine imagine that as 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 the theme of this podcast being that you can get better at things over time wow <laughs> <laughs> so philosophical cody anything you've thought about with this at all or have you not even paid any mind 
Uh, I think it's cool. I'm always down for new card types to get put in the game. Um, They're not I foil, just... though, so Cody's like, eh. No, nah, sure, they'll be foil. Foil tokens. Uh, I think putting Tifa on the cover of Opus is it's 11, right? Or 10? I don't even... What, what, Opus what set 11. Like? Opus yeah. 11. What a smart move. Uh, with the FF7 remake, which... Uh... The problem yeah. is that no one will have time to even play the game, the card game. Yeah, no. we'll, yeah. we'll all be glued to That'll our be my uh, time to shine <laughs> <laughs> i doubt it dude i i, I have a hundred percent faith that you're going to be playing oh, i thought you're saying seven. you doubt that i can shine i was like damn well i mean i think you'd just be better served at playing <laughs> ff7 <laughs> but i won't i won't go into the reasoning just <laughs> Uh, I also hope that they have like some kind of if there is like these tokens I hope we get some kind of official like set of them kind of like how they give out the dice and stuff like that well so, they're gonna have to do so if it means like like uh, like, like an official, if you're gonna like, have counter. shuriken ice like freeze counters could actually shuriken. Shuriken. Like, I'm, I'm telling you that's what the thing said there was a shuriken yeah. counter yeah, we can't have people uh... <laughs> and big guy have go back to old worlds with the white mage yeah, <laughs> sure. <you can. laughs> well, I mean, what are What's they that? doing? Wait, what? What are they doing? Magic for like planes? Oh, there's a like there's a million. Uh, they have loyalty, but like every token they, has a name. They're all they, my dice. they have a they have a dice that has the planeswalker symbol on it, and then you get it no in your releases use. usually. No yeah, or, or you're whatever you're doing, and then you can turn it up. That's not true. I would say that ninety percent. I think of the people, people sh maybe should, but. 90% of people do use them. I think you, because you're a competitive player like myself, you forget that, like, I think that the majority of Magic players are filthy casuals. So, I actually like, looked it up the other day. Okay. The well, population of players, it was something like 35 million. Okay, well, how many of them were competitive versus casual? Uh, Did you although, although, here's the thing. Uh, that's registered DCI numbers, and someone can have more than one number. I have, like, six. Yeah, so that you could probably divide that by maybe 10, but that's still 3 million players. Seems like a lot for a TCG, considering events only have maybe 1,000 people. I say only because yeah. compared to a million. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's well, worldwide, but... My, my point being that I think that 90% of the people do use those sure, counters sure. and those tokens, and that competitive players don't because spin downs suck, so... Oh, spin downs are awful, but also, like... uh, Yeah, so, Cody, Cody answer your question. It's mainly six-sided dice, and you, you know... Sometimes you have to go bigger because things get out of hand, <laughs> but <laughs> typically everything can be handled with a six-sided die or two okay. six-sided die. Fair you enough. got that there. The life lesson of this podcast, everything can be handled with a six-sided die. You you need to make a major decision in life, roll the dice. Oh, RNG, no. <laughs> I was looking for yeah, a dice to see if I yeah, could Yeah, and drawing call. cards are the most I can go with RNG. <laughs> Oh, you guys are lucky. I was like, if I find a dice, it, if I could roll, just to see if I just hit the hang-up button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, I, find him. I think that about wraps us up for this week, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Anything <laughs> else? I'd say we'll give a quick shout-out also to Greg Cole. Uh, his store, The Light, is now open, I believe. I saw him streaming part of his event, so. Yeah, that's really cool. And having a stream on Friday nights is pretty uh, BA, for sure. I, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so shout out to them and uh, best of luck with that. Go show them some support. Yeah. Uh, oh, I do have to. I do have to give a, a, a shout out real quick to Jacob. Um, I, I besides the hospital visit and a lot of other stuff that's um, that's been occurring, I've had multiple car problems. Blah, blah, blah. Jacob reached out. Jacob literally bought my national flight ticket. Um, Jacob and it was Jacob Sedla. Oh, okay. Our, our local. So very, very, I was trying to keep on the down low because I was very sad about it, but it was very much like, hey, team, like, I'm really sorry. Like, it doesn't look like it's going to be possible this year. Um, I'll be rooting for you, blah, blah, blah. And Jacob's basically like, hey, what's your birthday? You're going. So shout out. Uh, thanks for the support. And, you know, for everyone that's, it, it, not just for me, but for everyone that supports this cast, we, we made a joke earlier about like, you know, if it's not your cast, great. There are other casts, but, but we do really appreciate the people that do support this cast and you have not gone unnoticed. No, definitely. And, uh, but yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Choker Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, 
especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CarsDVLease.com and use promo code CHOCOBROS to get 10% off your next order.